Hey everybody, I'm John at Collect Cards. Hope you're all doing well. It is Friday night. It is August 9th. And um, the, the Olympics are uh, about to wrap up here for 2024 in Paris. It's been a pretty great two weeks, I'd say, overall. Um, you know, it's just been fun watching those events uh, at night. Um, you know, I, I, I get the notifications say, you know, knowing when certain people are winning gold or or who's winning, you know, a medal or whatever. But uh, it's still been cool and fun to watch it, even in prime time, even if I know the results. So, and I don't know the results of every event. So it's been fun to just kind of, it, the Olympic time's always fun. Um, but um, I'm going to show a few baseball cards here. You know, baseball used to be an Olympic event. Uh, I think they're hoping to bring it back in 2028, actually, when it's back here in the U.S. and L.A. Um, but this is... Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to show some cards here in a sec, but um, this is my 200th video. I, um, between, you know, the vast majority of my videos are f regular videos, and I've done a few shorts here and there, but um, overall, 200 videos. I can't believe I'm, I've gotten this, uh, <laughs> I've gotten this far in this uh, YouTube endeavor, and again, it's just been so fun to do, met so many great people, um, and learned so much. Um, and so it's just made my hobby experience so much more enjoyable than I thought it would be or could be um, when I first uh, pressed record on this, uh, on this phone here. I think it might be my second phone since I've been doing this, actually. That's how long it's been. It's been uh, two and a half years or so. But um, so, you know, what better to do for a 200th video than to just go back to basics and show some baseball cards. So the first thing I'm going to show here is a batch of George Brett cards that my good friend Tim um, sent to me after he watched my uh, most recent um, Bargain Hunters episode with Steve Vintage on Vintage. We picked up some George Brett cards, and I mentioned in that video that I just didn't have that many George Brett cards since I got back into the hobby in 2020. You know, had tons as a kid. Uh, just you know, they just haven't followed me around in moves over the years, and haven't been here in, with me in Michigan in 15 years. Uh, but uh, Tim took care of that for me by sending me a nice batch of George Brett cards. So thank you very much there, Tim. Some good stuff there. 91 tops. Always like 91 tops. I just think that's a really great set. Even despite being in the junk wax era, I just really like that 91 top set. This is a 91 upper deck card. <laughs> this card I probably had never seen before. A Tops Kids which I couldn't remember. I looked at the back when I first got this in the mail from 1992. I was just just out of the hobby at that point, so I just completely don't remember that card. And an OPG from 92, and then a little note there. Exactly. I don't have many George Brett cards. I did say that. And now, and he's got a cupcake waiting for me too, so I might take you up on that, Tim. So uh, thank you so much for sending those along. And um, I picked up I've picked up two um, two cards of note. Actually, really, only two pickups I've made total since the National. Um, and I'm going to show them right now. One was a um, LCS purchase that I made uh, about a week ago. Picked up this 1962 Tops NL Strikeout Leaders in a PSA 6. It's an older slab, an older flip, but flip's actually in pretty nice shape overall. And the card is, a, I think, a pretty nice six. I think this could pass for a six even today. Um, the, the edges on this uh, on the wood borders are are pretty good overall. I'd say. I think I think this is a decent card for the grade today. Maybe, eh, maybe be a five or a five five. Now I forgot about that back corner there until I just looked at it again. But uh, you know, PSA grading is it's if, if one thing, it's inconsistent, right? That's that's the that seems to be the consensus I take. I don't submit to PSA, although I might finally do that later this uh, later this summer or early fall through a group submitter. Um, but uh, I thought that was a really cool card. I got this card for all of twenty bucks, so I was really happy with that. I thought uh, absolutely already in a slab, a six no less collector grade for the wood grain borders. Tough, you know, tougher condition with those edges. Absolutely. I had no problem picking this one up. It's got two Hall of Famers on it, Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale. So I thought that was a really cool card for 20 bucks. So I was happy to find that one at a very fair price. And then 
The other pickup I'm going to show here is this really awesome. I just love this card. I'm just going to share it real quick here. It's Ernie Banks. It's his second year card. It's 1955 tops. I have always, well, not always, I'd say in the last couple of years, this card has really jumped out at me at being a card I really wanted to add to my collection. Now, you know, you can find them any day of the week. They're always out there. Um, but when B. Roth put this out there uh, in the last four to six weeks, I had this one kind of in the back of my mind thinking, mm, you know, if my national doesn't work out so well and I have some funds left over, you know, I might reach out. You know, I, I did reach out to him shortly before the national actually saying basically if I had some funds left, I might want to take this card off your hands if it's still available. Um, turned down, I pretty much did spend down my budget out there um, in, in Cleveland and came away with some really, you know, cards that I thought were really good um, for me uh, that I really enjoyed getting. But, um, you know, when I, when I got back about a week or so later, kind of, uh, you know, it was toward the end of the month. So I was kind of, you know, getting ready to re replenish my card budget, so to speak, for the month, uh, for this month. And uh, I reached out to Brian because I actually never crossed paths. Brian and I didn't cross paths at the National. I don't know how that happened. I didn't see him at the YouTube event. Um, but I reached out to him asking if this card was still available. Sure enough, it was. Um, we quickly made that deal happen. And um, he had it listed for a very fair price on Facebook originally on his card soup page. Um, so uh, I picked this one up, and I think it's a beauty. I mean, it's a 4.5. It's I could see why it's not a 5, too, and I'll show you in a second. But I really love this card. The centering on it's really good. I know I got a little bit of glare going on here with the light, so I apologize for that. Here's the back. Back is also really well centered. This is a great card. Great second year Ernie Banks. Here's you know a couple of reasons why maybe it just missed out on a five. I'll bring it up close. A little bit of that. You see that edge? The edge has got a little bit of like kind of an indentation or a dimple. Not a dimple, but a little bit of wear there. Um, it's not fully smooth along that edge. And then down here, there's a little tiny like well there's there right around here see that right there a little bit of a dimple there try not to get my fluorescent lights too much in there but i know they're on the card but i wanted to show wanted to show why i think it didn't get a five because gosh from even from here this card is is awesome and it, it's just even up close it's an awesome card the color on this is good really good um a huge reason why i really love this card is because unlike so many cards in 55 and even 56 tops, great sets. They're great sets. I love this card from 55. This was one of my favorite cards in the whole set. Um, I'm not a big fan of the color red. It's not my favorite color, but I just love the combination of blue-red on this card. It's just striking, especially with, you know, the uh, gradient and everything. But the main reason I love this card is that it is two different images of Mr. Cub. Um, so many, so many 55s and 56s used the same large portrait image. I mean, you know, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, um, and just you name it. There's probably a couple of dozen at least, you know, non Hall of Famers and even common, you know, com quote unquote commons in the set that use the same main headshot. Um, in 55 and even in 56 for some or even several. This card used two different shots, which I thought was really cool. Everybody watching this probably knows what the 54 Banks looks like. I don't have it out with me to show, but uh, you know what? I am going to take it out really quick just to kind of have them next to each other. I think it'll be really cool. So give me a hot second here. All right, here it is right here. I should have had this out right at the start, but it is kind of cool seeing them together back to back here on camera but uh so two or four different images of ernie banks on his first two cards for tops so anyway uh, i was in a 1.5 psa 54 but um really happy to pick this up thank you brian for the good deal on this um just uh yeah just love having it um so that's really all i wanted to share um 
in terms of cards that are, you know, like new pickups, I'll keep that on camera here for a bit longer. Uh, but I'm going to quickly talk about kind of how I think my collecting is going to go for the rest of the year. Um, in my last video, I um, it was a VR for Darren, uh, for Turn to Collecting, who uh, asked us to talk about what our goal card is for the next 12 months. And uh, it's for me, it's the 1940 play ball Joe DiMaggio. And it's going to take, you know, it's going to take some discipline in terms of uh, getting the funds together to get to there, to get uh, to be able to acquire that card next year. And I won't be able to get it until next year. Um, but to get there, it's going to require me not buying quite as much here for the for the latter half of this year. And so my my plan is, you know, I won't halt buying, but um, I won't be buying as much because I had a really good first half of the year in terms of pickups. I picked up some really cool cards that were on my want list and i was able to make that happen and was super excited about it but second half of the year here or the rest of the year it's going to be a little bit more back to basics i think um i'm going to get into ttms a little bit more i have been for the last week or two since i've been back from the national and i'm going to try to up that even more um and i need to get back on to uh get back into ebay i'm not selling right now that much on ebay just you know just cards from the last few years that you know two dollars here ten dollars there five dollars there it all adds up um some of them i might send out to com c again um i might finally get around to doing a com c video i do have my uh i do have uh, finally all hundred of my cards that i sent out there back in may finally have gone up onto the site um it did take the full like 16 weeks to get all 100 listed although the vast majority were listed within like the first eight weeks or even less um but uh, that's been a you know an, an interesting experience so far. You know I'm selling a few, but not surprisingly not that many yet. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I want to gradually build that budget up for for Joe D next year. And so my hope is that I won't pick up more than, or my plan is that I won't pick up more than one, only one, and maybe not even one card of a hundred dollars or more per month for the rest of the year. Um, and, and it might not even be every month um, right now there are only two cards on my radar that i really would like to get before the end of the year uh, that exceed 100 and those two really are if i get the one that i in the grade that i kind of like to get it would be between two and 300 so it wouldn't be any more than that um and so in, in that sense you know it's a very good chance i won't be showing quite as many pickups here in the weeks to come but the ones I do share, um, I'm hopeful will be, um, you know, nice, you know, <laughs> real nice ones uh, for, for what I've been kind of aiming for. But um, but again, picking up $20 cards like this every so often um, and my Bargain Hunters cards with Steve. Um, in fact, my my uh, Veda Pinson, it's our next up, upcoming episode here. We'll probably get it recorded hopefully next week or maybe soon after that. But uh, that'll be coming up here. But um, cards like that. Um, I'll still be picking up here and there when I can. Um, but, uh, yeah, that that's going to be my plan for the weeks moving uh, forward. Um, you know, on the TTM front, I'm going to share through the mail autographs. I wanted to show this one really quick to wrap up this video. This is an Omar Moreno auto that I got TTM'd, uh, a Yankee card. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I know for a fact... Um, my dad, so my dad, I've mentioned a couple times before in the past, he was a uh, taxi driver in New York City for many years. And uh, they had the New York, his, the company he drove for had the Yankees as an account. And so occasionally he'd have players in his car, more often an executive and not even that often. Occasionally, maybe a few times a year, you might have a, you know, a representative from the Yankees. Um, but he did have Omar Moreno in his car once and he actually brought home an autograph of his. Yeah, I think he just signed it on, like, literally an index card, or it could have even been a napkin for all I know. Um, I can't remember, but I know he brought a Moreno auto home when he was with the Yanks. Um, and, you know, that just got lost along the way years ago. Um, but I just thought it was cool to reach out to him, uh, and he was able to sign this. So I thought that was super cool. Um, and so it kind of, you know, I got this back a few days ago, and it kind of makes me want to just dive back into TTM again and get a bunch out there. It's always fun to get these in the mail no matter the player. So always fun to get uh, player mail like that. So anyway, 
I will wrap up this video with that. And let's put Mr. Cub back up on here. Actually, you no, know, Omar, you can actually go. You did your job for, for this video. We'll end it with a couple of Hall of Famers, although, gosh, he was a pretty darn good base stealer for several years with the Pirates, especially. Uh, but thanks for watching, everybody. I know this is a bit of a ramble on this one. I kind of a, might be a little all over the map, but I did want to get this video in tonight. So um, thanks for watching, everybody. I've got an SGC order coming for my next video. Um, hope to have that for one for you uh, probably in the next couple of days. So with that, take care. Enjoy the weekend. I'll see you on the next one.